Hey everyone, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be Comlex Level 1 High Yield Concepts for the Chapman's Points. Before I get started, I just wanted to encourage everyone to go ahead and check out my new podcast, please, by the same name, Med School Moose. Um, you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. I hope to upload a new episode sometime during this week. That should be really interesting. So please go ahead and take a listen to that and give me some feedback. I'm really trying to grow that because I think it's very important to get different perspectives on medicine and life in the medical field out there. So take a listen to that. Uh, let's go ahead and get started today with the Chapman's points. Just a few important points first. Uh, the first one being really the definition of a Chapman's point. There's a couple of important things to remember. So really what a Chapman's point is, is it's a small, firm, tender nodule. Uh, it's about two to three millimeters, so very tiny. Um, and it is an indicator of organ dysfunction. So all the points that we're going to be talking about, generally if a patient has tenderness there, it's going to be uh, a sign of dysfunction. And one of the important things to remember with Chapman's points is that they're pinpoint, 2 to 3 millimeters, like I said, and they are non-radiating. This is important because in comparison to trigger points, those are radiating. Chapman's points are non-radiating. They are very localized. Uh, in addition to that, another important thing is the distinguish, distinguishing of uh, diagnosis and treatment. So there are anterior Chapman's points and posterior Chapman's points. Um, the anterior points are used for diagnosis generally, and the posterior points are used for treatment. We will be focusing only on the anterior points uh, during this video because those are higher yield, and we'll see that in a moment. And then the other important thing is the clinical correlation here. So we'll see this a little bit better when it, we get to the chart, but obviously if you have a Chapman's point uh, in the lung, for example, that could be an indicator of something like pneumonia, uh, or uh, in contrast to that, you can use the Chapman's points, you can treat those Chapman's points to treat the conditions, to treat that pneumonia. Um, some of the other conditions highly associated with Chapman's points off the top of my head would be something like irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, or inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. So these points, uh, if there's tenderness there, is a sign of dysfunction, and then treating them can also help treat the condition that is occurring. So this is the picture that comes up most commonly on Google when you look at Chapman's points, and it's a mess, um, just kind of like what we saw with visceral somatics. Um, it's a little bit ugly, and I don't like to use something like this because it's just difficult to follow. So this is the chart that was given to me by my school once again, and this is the one that I will be using in this video. Um, it is not my own, but please feel free to take a screenshot of it for study purposes. And like I already said, we are only going to be focusing on the anterior Chapman's points for today. Remember, the anterior points are for diagnosis, the posterior points are for treatment. Um, however, the posterior points I have found are a little lower yield. You may have one or two questions about this, but it's usually not very relevant. Uh, when compared to the anterior Chapman's points, which are very high yield, I can guarantee that you will have questions on this on your Comlex Level 1 and Level 2. Um, and, you know, just like the viscerosomatic reflexes, unfortunately, this is just rote memorization. Um, so you're just going to have to kind of sit down and memorize it. However, just like in that video, I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to kind of group them and, and make it easier to digest. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. And the first one uh, is just something that's just a little bit of a wild card, and that's the eye. The anterior point for that is on the humerus. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of different ways you can remember this. That the head of the humerus is round like an eyeball, so you can think eye is just like the, the anterior part of the humerus right there, but that's just kind of a random one that doesn't go with the grouping. The next three that I'm going to group together are right here, um, and it starts with the clavicle, the superior aspect of the first rib, and then the superior aspect of the second rib. And the way that I remember that is with OPS. And that should be pretty easy to remember because it is alphabet alphabetical order. So clavicle is going to go with the O, which is otitis media. Superior part of the first rib is going to be the P, which is pharyngitis. And the superior aspect of the second rib is going to be the S, which is sinusitis. So OPS to kind of group those first three. Uh, the next part here, which is for me is kind of the most important part, is the heart, which is between ribs two and three. I kind of use that as my reference point to kind of count down from all the other Chapman's points from there. So as long as you remember that between ribs two and three is the most important part, because that's where the heart is, 
but also don't forget that that is going to include the thyroid, the bronchus, and the esophagus. So there are a couple other things there that we can group together. But that's generally my reference point is where the heart is. And then you kind of just move down from there. So if the heart is in between ribs two and three, then the upper lung is between ribs three and four. And then going with that, the lower lung is between ribs four and five. Moving even further down, the stomach is between ribs five and six. The gallbladder is between ribs six and seven on the right, as well as the liver. And that should make sense because the liver and the gallbladder are on the right side of the body. And then moving down even further, the spleen and the pancreas are between ribs 7 and 8. Now, this is an important thing, and it's easy to get tripped up with this. The spleen is between ribs 7 and 8 on the left, and that should make sense because the spleen is on the left side of the body. However, the pancreas is between ribs 7 and 8 on the right, so please take note of that. The pancreas is between ribs 7 and 8 on the right. Don't get it confused. That's the one that's on the right. It's one of the weird ones um, here, as well as with the eye being on the humerus. Pancreas between ribs 7 and 8 on the right. So moving on now, we're going to go a little bit lower down, uh, and the small intestine, because it's so big, is going to cover a large amount of area. So we went, you know, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, and now that we've hit the intestines, the small intestine is going to be between 8 and 9, between 9 and 10, and between 10 and 11. So hopefully you're kind of following, following along with how the grouping is going here. Uh, all these other organs and areas were between one rib, but the small intestine is actually going to cover uh, three different rib spaces because it's so big. And then following the small intestine is going to be the appendix, which is pretty high yield. I, I've definitely seen a lot of questions on this, um, and it's a little bit random, just like with the eye, but it's something definitely, definitely memorize this one. Uh, the appendix, the Chapman's point, the anterior Chapman's point for that is going to be the tip of the 12th rib on the right. So definitely just remember that one. I've seen uh, a ton of questions that talk about that. And then moving further down, uh, I kind of group these three together. Uh, so the bladder is going to be the, the belly button, the umbilicus right in the center there. And then uh, a little bit above that, if you can think maybe anatomically, if you can hallucinate it, uh, the kidneys might be a little bit above the bladder. So we're actually going to go one inch above and one inch lateral to um, the point for the bladder or the umbilicus. And then what sits on top of the kidneys, the adrenal glands. So we're actually going to go one inch lateral and two inches above as opposed to one inch because the adrenal glands sit on the, um, the kidneys. And then the last few are a little bit random, so unfortunately this is just going to be uh, more memorization. These two are kind of easy to get tripped up by, so let's group them together. The ovaries are going to be right there on the pubic bone, and the ovaries are pretty medial, so you can remember that with the um, pubic bone being very medial as well. And then the uterus is going to be the pubic rami, or the ischium. So try and keep those two grouped together as well. A little bit confusing, as you can see with a couple of these, but those are kind of just the weird ones to memorize. The other ones you can kind of group together and just walk your way down the ribs and know them that way. The uh, prostate uh, or in the males or the broad ligament in the female is going to be the IT band. Uh, and that one's actually fairly high yield as well. I've seen a good few questions on that. Um, and then everything having to do with the large intestine, the colon, the rectum, uh, is going to primarily occur on the femur. So before we get there, I just want to highlight a couple of the important ones here. Remember the eye is a little bit of a curveball, anterior humerus. The heart between ribs 2 and 3 is one of the important ones. That's our reference point. Uh, the pancreas here, remember, is between ribs 7 and 8 on the right. Remember that the small intestine is a big one. It's between ribs 8 and 9, 9 and 10, and 10 and 11. And then the appendix is also very high yield, which is tip of the 12th rib on the right. Uh, and then, you know, the other ones, you can kind of just walk your way down. But those are those are some of the weird ones, as well as uh, the ovary and the uterus, prostate, and the broad ligament. These are kind of the ones that are harder to just memorize because they're a little bit random, not associated with uh, the other Chapman's points here. So just take a special note. Uh, and take special attention to those just to make sure that they're, they don't trip you up. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and move forward now. And this is what I was talking about in terms of the um, large intestine and, and the rectum and the colon. Uh, it's all occurring on the femur here. And, and the way that I was taught it, which I think is a pretty easy way to remember it, is if you just take the colon and you kind of just flip it downwards over this axis, essentially that's what the Chapman's points are going to be. So we're going to start right over here and we're going to essentially go in this direction. So uh, proximal femur on the, on the right side here is going to be the ileocecal area. And then we're just following the colon. So mid uh, femur on the right is going to be the ascending colon, the hepatic flexure. Distal femur is going to be the right half of the transverse colon. And then we're going to follow along on the left side here with the left femur. So distal part of the left femur is going to be the left half of the transverse colon. Then followed by the splenic flexure and the descending colon are the um, parts of the middle of the left femur. And then ending with the proximal left femur, which represents the sigmoid colon. So again, essentially, we're just taking the, the uh, large intestine, the colon, the rectum, and we are flipping it over down onto the femurs. And then one thing to note here, which was on the previous slide, which isn't here, is the Chapman's point for the rectum, which is the lesser trochanter of the femur. So that is the end of the video. Hopefully this was helpful and will uh, allow you guys to memorize the Chapman's points a little bit easier. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe, leave me comments and suggestions about how I'm doing, how I can do better. Uh, I really appreciate all of the support and good luck studying.